Hello, my name is Denise Farlow and I'm with the National Community Action Partnership. This video, we're gonna be talking about the CSDG organizational standards and we're gonna be focusing on community engagement. This is the second set of standards that's under the broader category, maximum feasible participation. We are calling community action to address both family, a family agency and community goals. And we're called to engage the community in our work. And these standards really walk us through how we do that as an organization. So standard 2.1, the organization has documented or demonstrated partnerships across the community for specifically identified purposes. Partnerships include other anti-poverty organizations in the area. Now this standard, um, is, it sounds a bit vague at times and might sometimes, for some folks might seem overwhelming. Um, many CAPs have many, many partnerships. You have many formal and informal relationships with community-based organizations, faith-based entities, private educational institutions. You have a lot of different partnerships in your community because the war on poverty is not fought by a single individual or a single organization. We are built on the partnerships we have across the country. What the standard is saying, though, that while we may oftentimes report and talk about our breadth of relationships and partnerships across the community, that we do, in fact, have some relationships, some partnerships that are a bit more formalized. So this standard says that either we have documented or demonstrated partnerships for specifically identified purposes. This could mean that we might be the lead agency on a teen pregnancy prevention grant and we have three subcontractors all working together to reduce teen pregnancy in our community. It may mean that we are a subcontractor on an anti-violence campaign where we're providing some after-school programming to adolescents, and we're the subcontractor. But again, that's a documented partnership. We may be hosting a coalition on domestic violence. So we may have a group of members around the table who are part of this organized coalition. That membership list, would be a documentation of these partnerships that are going on in the community. And again, you heard specifically identified purposes in each of those particular examples. Now again, there's no one right way to do that. Those are just some examples that we've used in our training programs that you might see as a board of directors in terms of the type of partnerships you will see across the community. Standard 2.2 that the organization utilizes information gathered from key sectors of the community in assessing needs and resources during your community assessment process. Now these do include some specific sectors that when your organization and your staff is conducting the needs assessment that it will be doing every three years, there are certain groups that they're gonna to need to be sure they're talking to. These include other community-based organizations, faith-based institutions, private sector groups, public sector groups, and educational institutions. Most of you in the field, your CAP agencies are already talking to a myriad of people and a myriad of organizations in these categories. They're already talking to other CBOs like United Way, Salvation Army, or another multi-service nonprofit organization in your community. They may already be talking to churches, synagogues, mosques, and other faith-based institutions who are oftentimes also on the front lines of relieving uh, the conditions of poverty in our community. They may also probably be talking already to private sector. Maybe they're talking with the Chamber of Commerce, uh, the local business imp improvement district. There are other ways to talk to business folks in the community, but as part of your needs assessment, it's important to know what the private sector thinks the needs are in your community. They're probably already talking to public sector folks. They're probably talking to the local departments of social services or whatever you may call that in your local community. They may be already talking to the local public health department and others in that public sphere about what do they see as the needs in the community. And finally, as educational institutions, odds are there's probably already conversations happening with your school board, perhaps with your local university in the community, your local trade um, associate or trade um, educational institutions. There are a lot of different ways that organizations collect information from these groups. Now you as a board, how will you hear about this information? You probably will see pieces in your appendices to your community assessment. They may talk about focus groups or surveys or summaries of information or findings that come out of the conversations with these groups. You're going to want to look, see your community assessment and see that your organization staff have talked to folks in these variety of areas. Now again, as we talked about in some of the other videos, you may want to have a program committee that kind of does the deep dive into your community assessment. 
and then that committee reports up to the full board having done that assessment and having that reflected in the board minutes. But again, there's no one right way to do that for the board of directors or for your organization. Standard 2.3, the organization communicates its activities and results to the community. These are one of the, this is one of the standards that you might be saying, well, of course we do this. Of course we tell our story. We have our website. We have our annual report. We have our social media campaigns on Twitter or Facebook. If you're doing all that kind of good work, of course, it's very easy for you and your organization to meet this standard. And that's the intent behind this standard, that you as an organization is communicating your story about your impact and your activities to the community. And again, this can be met in a variety of different ways. Standard 2.4, the organization documents the number of volunteers and the hours that are mobilized in support of its activities. Now, this particular standard, this data has already been collected by your organization and reported on an annual basis through something called the Information Survey. We thought that this was an important standard because, again, when we tell the story about the impact of community action, the number of volunteer hours is significant. Just last year, we saw in our network more than 25 million hours of volunteer service donated to community action agencies across this country. For us, this is one of the most important elements of how we talk about leveraging community volunteer and other resources in our community. So again, I hope you as a board are aware of how many volunteer hours are coming into your organization. I'm sure you probably have ways to recognize those volunteers. But again, those elements are not necessarily part of the standard. We want to make sure boards are familiar with this is a critical data element both I'm sure for you as an organization and for those of us at the national level when we tell the community action story. So that's our community engagement category. We will see you on the next video.